Zelensky is a complex figure. When Zelensky was elected, he won a landslide election against the right-wing billionaire oligarch Petro Poroshenko, and he was running as the peace candidate. This is very important to understand to get us to where we are today. Zelensky spoke Russian on his campaign. Zelensky is of Jewish descent. Zelensky was trying to portray himself as a peace candidate who can help unite the Russian-speaking population in the East with the ultra-nationalists in the West, largely in the West, especially in the parts that had, of Ukraine that had been part of Poland, in areas around the West that where during the Nazi occupation of Ukraine during World War II, there were many Nazi collaborators in Ukraine, including Stepan Bandera, who's become basically a patron saint. He's been officially honored by the Ukrainian government ever since the 2014 US pact coup. Again, this is a Nazi collaborator who created a fascist organization called the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists that was responsible for pogroms against Jews, massacres of tens of thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands of Jews, Poles, of communists, of the Roma, 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 Romani population. So the point is that Zelensky ran as a peace candidate. He spoke Russian. He said that he wanted the war in the East to end, whereas Poroshenko had taken a hard, aggressive line with U.S. support, with billions of dollars of U.S. support, military aid, and advisors from the CIA and other U.S. agencies, he waged a war, a brutal civil war on the Donbass region, on the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics, and was responsible again for over four-fifths of civilian casualties in that civil war. And Zelensky said, we want this war to end, and we want peace. And on that platform, he got 73% of the vote to just 24% for the right-wing nationalist oligarch billionaire Petro Poroshenko. Now, what happened, though? Zelensky entered office, and there were two things that happened. One, the U.S. just forced him to renege on all of his promises. He did a complete 180. And two, Zelensky had no political experience and had no idea what he was doing. So th this gets to part, the other part of your question you asked about, the servant of the people party. What is his party? It's nothing. It's not a political party. It was a platform to get Zelensky elected. Who is Zelensky? He's literally an actor. Now, he has a background in law, but he's an actor. He was an actor who played a Ukrainian president on TV. He literally had a TV show in which he played the president of Ukraine. And you can watch a show on Netflix. It's called The Servant of the People. And after that show, which was funded by a billionaire oligarch who later funded his campaign, he ran for president and he turned the name of his show into the name of this party, Servant of the People, and he won as a TV star. Now, I mean, I guess we can't be too surprised because Donald Trump was also a reality TV. I mean, he was reality TV, which is just as fictional as Zelensky's show. But I mean, we're in a, we're in a very surreal era of TV stars becoming presidents. And Zelensky had no political experience. So when he entered office, he immediately was just pushed into supporting Washington's line. And then there's another element. I should say there's a third element as well. And that's the role of the Nazis, the far-right extremists in Ukraine. And again, this is not just Russian propaganda. They have a very significant influence, especially in the state security apparatus. Now, you often see propaganda claim that, well, the Nazis and the far-right extremists in Ukraine do not actually have much influence because at the ballot box, these far-right parties like Svoboda, the right sector, the formerly called the Social Nationalist Party, uh, National Socialists, they just reversed the language there, the Social Nationalist Party of Ukraine, these neo-Nazis in Svoboda, it's true that they only get a few percentage of the vote in the elections. That's true. However, the Nazis are not that influential in the political class. They're influential in the security apparatus. This brings us back to 2014. When the U.S. Or orchestrated this coup in 2014, the, what happened is there were, the government was weak, the Ukrainian military was very weak, and the billionaire oligarchs in Ukraine hired a bunch of gangs of thugs to attack the Russian-speaking separatists in the eastern part of Ukraine, who are Ukrainians, they're not Russians. They speak Russian, but they're Ukrainians. This is a civil war. So what happened is 
there were gangs like the Azov Battalion, the Idar Battalion, and these other groups, Tornado Group, and all these, these Nazi gangs, who were ideologically motivated to fight, unlike the Ukrainian military and National Guard, which had very low morale. So billionaire oligarchs gave them a bunch of money to these gangs to give them weapons and equipment to fight the Russian-speaking separatists in the East, and especially in the, the city, the coastal city in the Southeast near the Azov Sea called Mariupol. There's been a lot of fighting since Russia invaded on February 24th. There's been a lot of fighting to seize Mariupol to try to make it part of the Donetsk People's Republic. Now, Mariupol was the base for this notorious fascist militia called Azov. Azov is a neo-Nazi militia. It was called the Azov Battalion because originally it started as this gang that, that was fighting these pro-Russian separatists in the East. And then what happened is after the, the coup, the government was so weak that Azov was incorporated into the National Guard and it worked with the Ukrainian armed forces to fight these Russian-speaking separatists in Mariupol and successfully defeated them. The reason Mariupol fell back into the hands of the, the Ukrainian government is because these neo-Nazis played the defining role in this battle for Mariupol in 2014. And I want to explain something really quickly. This is an article I published at multipolarisa.com, my website. These are the symbols used by Azov. Azov has been supported by the U.S. government directly. They've, the military advisors have been photographed from the U.S. and Canada meeting with these Azov Nazis. These are the symbols. This is the official patch used by Azov. In the middle, you can see that this is another uh, German Nazi symbol called the Wolfsangel. It's, it was directly used by Nazi Germany. And on the right, you can see another neo-Nazi symbol used by white supremacists called the Black Sun. They'll sometimes see neo-Nazis, they'll have this tattooed on their elbows or their knees. And on the left, you can see that both of those Nazi symbols are incorporated together in Azov's official patch. And the water represents the Azov Sea. So it's called Azov because it's, that's where the sea is. And they were based in Mariupol. So this is a literal Nazi group. Here are photos. And by the way, these are tweets that I posted from an article back in 2018. I've been reporting on Ukraine and the neo-Nazis. This is January 2018 for over four years now for more than four years. I mean, basically these are tweets from 2018. This is, a, this is a problem that has been known about for a long time. This is not Russian propaganda. Obviously it's in Moscow's interest to exaggerate it, but it's a very real problem. And these forces are not elected. It doesn't matter if Zelensky's Jewish, he doesn't elect who the military is. He doesn't elect who the police are. Joe Biden doesn't pick who police officers are. He doesn't pick much of the military. I mean, some people, but most of the military command is made internally within the Pentagon. He doesn't choose most of the people in the National Guard. These, this is the, the, these are the people who are the most ideologically motivated to fight the Russian-speaking separatists. Now, why is that? Because they, they preach a Nazi ideology, a white supremacist ideology that portrays Russians as Asi Asiatic as descendants of the Mongols. And they say that, and you know, the golden horde, and they say that Ukrainians are a pure white race, whereas Russians are Asiatic. And actually we've seen this even, we've seen this, this propaganda talking point reflected in Western media that have published like these crazy stories portraying uh, Putin as like a Mongol, like a Mongol warrior. And like, also, all this insane propaganda, like the media has gone white nationalist recently in talking about how it's bad. This war in Ukraine is worse than the war on Yemen or Syria or Libya or Iraq or Afghanistan because they have blonde hair and blue eyes and they're civilized, as these Western journalists are saying. So, I mean, these are photos of U.S. and Canadian military officers meeting with Azov, and you can see their Nazi Volsangel patches. And this is an article I published of, it's called Ukraine's National Guard boasts of Nazis killing Russian Muslim orcs with lard bullets. This is a tweet that was posted by the U official Ukrainian National Guard account with a blue check mark on Twitter. 
on February 27th, three days after Russia invaded, they, they wrote boasting of Azov fighters of the National Guard greasing the bullets with lard against the Kadriov orcs. That is the name of the leader of Chechnya. Chechnya is part of the Russian Federation and is part of Russia. And there are Chechen fighters from the Russian military who are in Ukraine. And the vast majority of Chechens are Muslim. So they're referring to Chechen Muslims as orcs. And this is the Ukrainian National Guard boasting, posting a, a video of Ukrainian Nazis taking their bullets and putting them in pig fat and then putting them in their gun because they think that this will send the Chechen Muslims to hell because it's haram to, to eat. I mean, by the way, being like being touched by pigs doesn't mean like you're violating Islam. They don't, they don't eat pork, but I mean, whatever this is, you don't, don't expect Nazis to understand basic facts. Like, again, this is not just Russian propaganda. This is the Ukrainian National Guard's official Twitter account boasting of its Nazi fighters putting pig fat on its bullets. Again, this isn't to justify Russia's invasion, but we need to be very clear here that just because Zelensky is Jewish doesn't mean that, not, that, that Ukraine doesn't have a serious Nazi problem. It does have a very serious Nazi pro problem. One final thing I'll say before going back to another question here. And the Atlantic Council published an incredible report admitting this. Now, what is the Atlantic Council? The Atlantic Council is NATO's de facto think tank in Washington. It is one of the most influential groups in the Beltway. It has very significant influence in US foreign policy circles and has pushed for a very aggressive line against Russia in particular. The Atlantic Council is funded by the US government, the British government, other European governments. It is funded by the weapons industry, the military industrial complex that has a vested interest in, in sending more weapons to Ukraine. And it's also funded by the fossil fuel industry, which I can talk about later because this is a, another, another important part of this is because the US is also competing with Russia over the European energy market. The US is trying to prevent Russia from sending oil and gas exports to the, to the EU. And the US wants to send its oil and gas to the, to the EU. And the US has recently become the largest exporter of liquefied natural gas, LNG, for the first time in history because of this conflict in Ukraine. But this is an article at the Atlantic Council. Again, NATO's de facto voice in Washington. And they have this hilarious article from 2018 titled, Ukraine's got a real problem with far-right violence. And no, RT didn't write this headline. So again, this is not Russian propaganda. This article admits that a neo-Nazi group called C-14, which has that name because the 14 is a reference to the white supremacist 14 words slogan, which is something like, we want to secure a future for our white children or whatever, that they received a grant directly from the Ukrainian Ministry of Youth and Sports to promote so-called national patriotic education projects. This is a neo-Nazi group that has attacked the Roma community. It's attacked anti-fascist demonstrators. It's attacked LGBT events. Again, a neo-Nazi group with a white supremacist name received direct funding from the Ukrainian government. So again, this is not Russian propaganda. Ukraine has a very serious Nazi problem. And yes, it has a Jewish president, but the reality is that he doesn't have that much influence. Like Joe Biden doesn't have that much influence, like any U.S. president. The military industrial complex controls the U.S. government, the CIA, the large arms corporations, the Pentagon, the other Beltway contractors, Wall Street, Silicon Valley. The U.S. president has very minimal control over foreign policy, which is why it's consistent among every single president. And Zelensky has very little control. And he doesn't control the unelected state security services.